pick up your they don't do anything but actually it's just fantastic young people out there. They're living for the same time. They've been in gangs, they've come out and they've reformed their life and they want to help their kids. The, the kids that are still in gangs and things like that. And then you just you just cannot let such kind of things go without recognition, you know. And so what we do is we hold it in the hands of the really and we want at the local MP, so that the MP can see what wonderful use they have in their constituency, you know, and ask them to come and give these awards to the young people. And then we have a platform for the young person to speak, and for about five or six minutes, talk about their work, you know. And you're just fascinated, you know. You must never underestimate the stability of young people. Once they're focused and once they know what they want to do, they're just go there. And it's just an honest thing that it's always in the lots of tears and the young people go through so many difficulties that they can go from a really good place. You know, I'm just going to say one more. Sorry, just, I just wanted to mention about this mentoring relationship because that was the, the, the focus of the session. Um, because the relationship with Mickey was very important to this development, it wasn't just one time or the other. And I think just to say about Mickey as a mentor, um, some elements which were really key, I think, for us to really work together was that, first of all, she was always really keen, she was keen from the beginning to, to want to, to work with her, to listen for her ideas, and but the first thing, the second thing was open, that she was really open to whatever we wanted to do and um, yeah, to really support it and give us kind of the main responsibility. And um, the third thing was that she still had a lot of practical advice and and she wasn't just uh, you know in the background, she was very much still working with us. I think that definitely we need that. because um, we're still very inexperienced and we don't know a lot of things. So that gives it structure. Um, and the fourth thing um, yeah, was, uh, she was very positive, positive encouragement because often in the process things look like they weren't going to work. But because she always encouraged us, then we made it through and we kept going. And I think that personal relationship as well, you know, caring for us and inviting us to her home, cooking for us, going out for coffee, that was really, that was really key. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. So thank you. Give this to the UN women of this girl because they have a girl's party. Then we come back in the beginning. So thank you so much, Nancy. I think it's a big matter. Thank you so much. But we actually don't have the confidence to sit at the table. You know, how many of us here, including myself, if we were in that boardroom in that corner office, would do the same and would just say, even if invited, would actually just say, oh no, it's okay. I sit in the corner. Maybe it's really time for us to believe in ourselves and to really say, I have something to say, I have something to say. Yeah, let me sit at that table. As a matter of fact, let me sit at the head of that table because we really have something to say, you know. So, you know, I um, the message logic of love, sitting about the logic of love, I um, uh, just want to share a little story why I see it. That made me think recently why I see the world is really ready for this message. Um, you know, we're having the Women's Liberation Island uh, Facebook page, and so I maintain that page, and uh, obviously do a lot of networking and connect with other organizations, not just locally, but through the Facebook, also worldwide. And I have one campaign or organization I came across. Um, look at you, I found no. So I always thought you can just uh, count from 1 to 10, we'd like to have 10 rows. And that's all the ones you need, and then you want to put it up there, and you want to share with others. And then on the bottom of the paper, you just write down things, describe what you're saying, you're saying, are your options, your three points. And after that, in the group, after you're 
I will say it, but she could add whatever she would like. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that's the main aim of the presentation, and we've come to the time, so hopefully we'll have the slide up very soon. But while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to give you a little bit of back background on myself. Um, I'm the Chief Executive of the Charity in Birmingham for Women Acting in Today's Society. Yeah, because it's a really big song. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Better? Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Uh, Women Acting Today Society, a charity that was set up in 1993, uh, which aims to empower women. Um, our main aims are to enable women to have a voice in society. So we build up women's confidence and understanding of how they can participate more effectively in society through workshops. So we do um, workshops on confidence building, presentation skills, communication skills, leadership skills. But also we support women to understand about the various decision making processes. So how does government work? Whether it's national government, whether it's the UN, or whether it's local government, and support them to have a voice in that. So, in England we have consultations where the public are asked to give their um, advice and support in what policies to be made. And we support women by actually organising consultation events when they can do that. We also support women going through domestic abuse. So if they have relationship problems, we have support workers that can help them through that process. So, in my role, I have to do quite a lot of public speaking at various levels, and what I'm going to be sharing to you today is some of the, my experiences of public speaking and some of the tips as well. Um, can I just ask you, I want to give us two, you know, we've been sitting down for quite a while now, and I want to ask you now to just do something that's going to kind of break the ice a little bit. Right. Each of you would either have your handbags with you, or you've got something in your pocket. Or what I want you to do is have a little fish around in your handbag, or in your pocket, and see if you can find something in there that you will feel represents yourself. Okay, so have a picture of having your hands back to your pocket. Okay. Individuals talking to people in positions of power, they have very limited time to hear. They have lots of messages coming at them all the time. So they need to be able to pick out what you're saying very quickly. You only have a very short window to they have very short attention. Also, if you want to build relationships, a lot of the time we need to build relationships with it's in our families, with it's other people. But a lady in our group of outside who just talked about building a relationship with a new man or man that she met. Building relationships is most important if you want to get followers, if you want to build allies. So it's really important, again, for you to be able to get your message across so that people can understand what it is that you want to say. And again, in Zambia. So, I'll give you an example. Where we work at Wade, we, we try to get more women involved to build our network of women. So, in terms of trying to get our message across, we have some very short aims, three short aims. One, we enable women to have a voice in society. Two, we help women into decision making. Three, we help women to have a voice. So very short, clear messages, yeah? The next thing is how to, how to get your message across it. Again, it's all about language, yeah? Knowing who it is that you your audience, for example. So if you're talking to a group of your, your people, there's no point talking in very poor language, very, um, Long, theoretical words, thank you very much. You need to speak in the language of your people. Yeah? So that's another important thing. And jargon, 
And that is what is taught in abbreviation. So when you is introduced to me, you said, I come from Wales. But nobody outside of Birmingham knows what Wales stands for. So it's very, it's very easy for us to get used to talking in abbreviation. And that's called jargon. And if you work in a policy sector or a government sector, there's lots and lots of jargon that's used there. Yeah? So you've got the UN, you've got CEDAW. Has anybody heard of CEDAW? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a few people have heard of CEDAW, but outside of the UN, not a lot of people know what CEDAW means, which is the Convention of the Elimination of Discrimination and Violence Against Women. Yeah? But outside of them, not enough of people know that. So it's very important when you're thinking about putting your presentation together that you're not actually using a lot of words that contain jargon. And if you do, because there's occasions where you have to use jargon, then you actually also say what the word means. If I'm with a group of people, what I tend to say to them is, I may use jargon in this presentation, because naturally you do. Please stop me and ask me if you don't understand the position. It's always easy, you know, to give that an effective presentation. So straight away, you, the audience, know what it is that I'm going to be talking about. So that's how you start your presentation. What does your presentation aim to do? What do you want your audience to achieve by the time you've got to the end of your presentation?